Hello and welcome to my channel, I Win to Lose Gaming. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at the mobile game Brown Dust 2. So Brown Dust 2 is the sequel to the, well, original Brown Dust, which later actually changed its name to Brave 9. We'll be taking a look at many facets of this game, including the characters you can collect, the gameplay, progression, and of course, the gotcha. This video is sponsored by Brown Dust 2, so if you like what you see, a link to download the video will be in the description below. But as always with my sponsored content, my goal is to simply showcase to you what the game is about and what you can realistically expect from actually playing the game. We're going to start off with the gameplay, and the first thing you'll actually notice is that there's kind of like an entire little world to actually explore. And it's interesting because this game actually has like a lot of different regions and you can teleport around, you can see here, and explore all these different areas that happen to be linked to a story uh, which you go through. And this game is very story driven, by the way. There's a lot of story to deal with. But we can see here that I'm currently in the Night of Blood story cartridge. And there's going to be a lot of stories that you can unlock. Um, currently in this closed beta, we have, you know, four here, one here, three here, and one there. So in total, that is nine stories that you can collect. And each one is actually a pretty hefty amount of gameplay. So the way that the story often goes is that you kind of progress through. And a lot of it is voice acted, which is absolutely welcome. And when you go through it, you'll learn a lot about these individual characters, kind of what they're going through. And there's already quite a bit of tragedy and darkness in this story, so it's not as cute and fluffy as you might expect. So now that we've talked a bit about the story, let's next take a look at some of the characters you can collect. And if you know anything about Brave 9, you'll know that this is one of the selling points of the series. So characters are divided into three star, four star, and five star rarities. And we can see that even just for a random three star character like Maria, the art is absolutely fantastic. It's animated, she has, she's voice acted as well. And each of these characters have an ability based on the costume that they're using. In her case, she attacks two times, she's dealing some magic damage, and it is in this grid shape. So we'll get into combat in a little bit after we go through some of the characters. Let's take a look at a few more. I believe he is a doctor that helps you out. And we have <laughs> our token otaku character right here, Jaden. You love to see the variety. Then we have our fairly standard main character type character. And we have some others. We have Andrew. We have some other waifus like Julie here. Uh, very cute design. You can see that there's quite a bit of fan service. You can even see here that she has a naval area, which um, some games nowadays don't have that. You can even collect some pretty funny characters like Wiggle here, a skeleton with a giant bomb. Uh, so it's great to see like, you know, some variety with the type of stuff you can collect and not just purely husbandos and waifus. But the waifus in this game, they are something else. I mean, just look at Beatrice here. I think you get her during the tutorial missions and she looks absolutely absolutely fantastic let's go through take a look at a few more we have Riginette. we have lydia so lydia one of the more conservative designs you love to see it a bit of variety and we have uh, this guy who's actually pragmatically dressed although the sword is quite large we even had this husbando who i've been leveling him up a little bit because i do plan to actually use him for my uh you know the remaining amount of time i have in this closed beta this is a five star character as we can see so we have this uh, handcuffed waifu, very nice. We have some others. So what's interesting about this game is that if we take a look at their costumes, we can see that Eustia has two costumes. She has the quarter moon jab, uh, this costume where she has her hood on, and this costume where she has her hood off. And what's interesting about this is that costumes in this game actually provide battle slash combat ability. So the more costumes you have for one character, the more combat abilities they will actually have. So we can take a look at just a couple more costumes that I have managed to collect. I did actually get another costume for this character here, who I like her a lot. She's also only a three star character, but I find myself using her a lot, at least for this early game. Uh, part of the game. I'm not sure how she is in the end game, but you know, only time will tell. And we can see that she has a schoolgirl outfit as well as 
Um, I guess this is like kind of her haggard delinquent outfit. All right, so next let's talk about combat in this game. And combat in this game, I feel like, is actually very unique. Pretty much every turn that you take is a mini puzzle game, which is really interesting. So you can move your characters around like this. And in this case, I'm going to have this character go first because she's my buffer. She buffs everyone and increases everyone's attack. I'm going to move my tank to the front. And I'm going to put my kind of mage-ish DPS right here. And we can see here that she attacks the target in front of her, plus targets on the corners from where she attacked. So yeah, you can see here that there's a lot of things to take into consideration. Uh, every character's abilities, like this one, costs SP, which is this these little squares here. And yeah, okay, so now that we've set up everything, you can see that there's, there's a lot that I just did here. Let's see what happens here. Now the characters will all do all the stuff I told them. We're going to start off with this character buffing. This character is going to do that big X nuke, which I mentioned. And I didn't even see the monkey in the back, so there's one little enemy there. Range units will actually bypass the tank and attack one character behind them. You can see the monkey there attack my uh, kind of this X character girl. But that's okay. Obviously, it's just one little monkey left. And some of the battles in this game get really high stakes. This one is just like your kind of standard farming battle, which was pretty simple. So let's take a quick look at what a bit of a more difficult fight looks like in this game. One nice thing about Brown Dust is that you are able to just swap characters in and out, like even just like this, right? So super quick and immediate, which I absolutely love the fact that you're able to do this. So now I have probably the team that I do want to use against it. We're going to start off with the buff to this character, and we're going to have this character one-shot the first wave. Now, this giant pig, though, is very dangerous because if it knocks back one of your characters, that character will be bumped into a character behind that character and take a ton of damage. Two thousand years later. To deal with them appropriately. So let's see. Oh, no, my order is completely messed up. Oh man, see, so you forget one thing and everything gets messed up. Uh, we can see <laughs> very important to keep track of what you're trying to do in this game because otherwise we can see here super uh, inefficient what I just did there. But oh well, that's okay. Now this thing's ability will be on cooldown, so it's not going to be a big threat anymore. So let's just go ahead and just have them all auto attack. But yeah, you can see all the little details in this game is going to matter a lot. We also have a chain system where the more you hit an enemy, the more damage they end up taking. So you do want to do multi-attacks and target focus down an enemy that you want to take out. But yeah, <laughs> strategy didn't quite go as well as I expected, but we can see that there's a, going to be a lot of depth to the battle system and understanding what the enemies can do as well as your characters. So next, let's talk about some of the kind of daily grind and what you can expect with progression in this game, how you get characters outside of the gacha, which we will talk about at the end of this game, as well as some of the systems that are in this game. So first things first is that we actually have a billboard and this billboard, which you can complete, provides a decent amount of gold when you go through and do all these different things. But a lot of characters have these abilities that you can do here that you can cook, for example, to create a lot of items to heal you. So right here, we're gonna cook some of these, uh, whatever that mushroom dish was, looks very good. I have this cute little animation where she cooks a bunch of fried mushrooms and this will heal your characters with 32 HP, auto heal, assuming you have your um, little auto heal thing here selected. Now there's a bunch of other stuff you can do, like for example, this character can craft gear and we could probably craft, let's say just craft 10 of these um, magic rods. I think I need a couple of them. So there we go. You do spend some resources, you spend these ability pills to do character abilities. One thing I really like about this game, which I'm not sure exactly how generous they're going to be when it comes to the live version, but at the very least for this closed beta, we are actually able to recruit characters with uh, these items right here, which is in my inventory, these things, these five star are contracts. Now, I'm not sure how many we're going to get on the live version, but at least for this closed beta, they gave us five of these. And let's go ahead and talk to, for example, Eleanor. Um, let's take a look at her 
design and stuff. Oh, very nice. Okay, she's got like a cool shadow arm and she's got, you know, a very conspicuous looking tie here. She is a five-star character, which is the highest rarity that we can get. But we can use these five-star character recruitment contracts to recruit her. So now they're going to have a little banter back and forth between Eustia and the recruited character. And uh, some, some of the characters are a bit sassier than others. Looks like she is a bit uh, more straightforward and serious. So, yep, now we actually have her and we can add her to our roster, uh, which is pretty incredible. So that is just some of the progression in this game, how you can recruit characters like that. And you can even refresh here to see what characters come uh, by spending a little bit of gems here. Uh, and we will have a couple new characters come. We'll see that guy leave and a couple characters come in. And we can see who came in. So let's see, we have a Laclis, who is a five-star character. And oh, we have um, this person with wings. I like her little sprite so far. Let's take a look at her. She's a four-star character. And we can see here though that these characters will appear every single day and you'll be able to refresh them as well with a bit of the premium currency. Now you're probably wondering, okay, let's talk about the gotcha. So, uh, <laughs> starting off, we have this gotcha, which I believe is a costume for Justia. We can see here that I've already pulled 27 times on it. Unfortunately, I have not gotten her. Let's take a quick look at the probability. We can see that it is a 1.5% for Justia and a 3% chance in order to get a 5-star costume, as well as, you know, uh, chances there down below. So I've got, you know, uh, 4,900 gems, which is enough for 24 uh, pulls. And we're going to see, we're just going to spend all of them to see if we can get it. Now, also worth mentioning, we do get one free pull per day on this banner, as well as this banner. We can see here that I've already pulled three times with just the one free pull per day. So take that with what you will. And this banner, I don't believe, has a free pull, but it's just kind of a generalized banner with, it looks like even just these costumes in here, but a bunch of stuff is just gonna be in there. Let's go ahead and see if we can wrap up this closed beta with an exciting temple. And oh my gosh, you're already bombarded by YouTube demonetization right here. You gotta love the uh, fan service of this game. Oh, we got, it looks like a five star. Let's see, I'm gonna let the animations play out, obviously, because this is the first, uh, uh, pull session I did while recording, which is very nice. I love kind of the way that the MC approaches this costume and she reveals it like, bam, here's your three star costume. <laughs> Thank you so much. So yeah, we're getting a bunch of random three stars. I'm assuming the rainbow is a five star. Oh, that one got like a critical or whatever and changed into a four star. Very nice. I didn't know that it would do that. So we have three star. Here we go. The moment we've been waiting for, what 5-star did we get? It doesn't seem like it's the uh, featured one. Oh, okay, so I already have her. Uh, I showed you guys her earlier, but you know what? Very cool. We still get a, a nice little costume. And I guess I'll wrap up this video after these polls by showing you guys what we do with dupes as well. Um, so we did get a, a new 4-star character. I don't think I've seen her before. And we got her again. Very cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and do another 10 pull real quick to wrap up this closed beta. Oh, I think that's only a four star, right? Yeah, we're just gonna give the big ol' skipperoo. Uh, we got that dude, that's cool. But let's go ahead and do our four single pulls. All right, we got another one of him. Oh, we got a dupe of her for this closed beta. I mean, I think everything's gonna be wiped anyway, right? So. It doesn't really matter uh, what I get here, <laughs> but at least it's interesting to see. We, we even got Wiggle here, although his name is just Bomb Fanatic uh, right there. So unfortunately, we weren't able to get a nice preview of Justy's costume. So since we're on that topic of, you know, all those polls and what we do with them, you can actually use the additional costumes that you got to upgrade the specific ability that you got for this character. In this case, um, since we got a dupe of her, we can use that costume that we got in order to upgrade this skill. And we can see it's a pretty big upgrade. It goes from the cooldown time of seven turns down to three turns. Basically, since each battle so far has been pretty short, this might give her another chance to use it twice. And different upgrades will upgrade different facets of the skill. We can see after we upgraded her skill once, 
The next upgrade will increase the damage substantially from 112 up to 150. So yeah, those are some pretty big upgrades for getting dupes for the costumes. So yeah, there you go, my initial impressions of Brown Dust 2. The game is going to be free to play, and I'll also have a link for you guys to download the game if you do like what you see. For me, I absolutely love the art and uh, the fan service in this game, so I will be giving it a shot once the live version hits and the game is released. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. This is I Went to Lose, signing out.